Raptasoft is a game company that not a lot of people know about. This is due to the fact that the developer, publisher, engine, and primary seller for this game is under the name PopCap. However, the creative lead that was the inspiration in creating this game and the actual developers were Raptasoft. Shuzzle is an adorable puzzle game that has more attention to detail than you could imagine a puzzle game in 2005 to have on MSN games. Which is where I used to play it, but apparently it's no longer available on there, so honestly, this genuinely makes me a little little bit upset. Since I've been actively looking for the smallest details I could find, I ended up finding more than I previously thought Shuzzle had to offer. Which just goes to show the hard work that Raptorsoft put in this game, although not necessary, really enhances the experience to the player. The two main themes that contrast Shuzzle from its competitors is the user interface experience and the actual gameplay. The UI appeals to both eyes and ears and goes for a vibrant retro feel that radiates enjoyment. The gameplay itself slides the competition off the ice by incorporating specific and interactions with the chuzzles where the outcome is different depending on the varying causations. Beginning with the prior, the main hub has 8 buttons. 4 for gameplay, and 4 for other things such as options, your high score, and the room that gives the game more of an overarching goal if you're looking for that extra challenge. The options menu contains the ability to change several things. Custom cursors are also available, which changes your pointer to a magic wand. A nice touch to the atmosphere. Colorblind mode is also available, which honestly surprised me, and adds symbols to the chuzzles. I feel no need to comment on the high score room, except that it has different music, and a moving star animation at the top so that way the screen doesn't look like one static image. The trophy room outlines the many awards that are yet to come, as well as showcasing the shiny pieces of metal that people have given significant meaning. Not only that, but it tells you the exact month, day, year, and time when you receive it. It's almost as if they put a ton of effort into Chuzzle to get their wives to stop playing Bejeweled all day long. Wait. Wait, that's what... That's what actually happened? <laughs> I wasn't, uh... I wasn't expecting that. Expectations were also shooken in the area of transitions. A star transition when you go to and from button rooms. A cool whoosh effect when you click on the pieces of metal that people have given significant meaning. A box response that slides up from the bottom asking you if you want to continue or start a new game, which besides being a great feature for a puzzle game, then asks for your difficulty, which once selected, blesses you with that sweet star treatment. Another little treat is the difference in volume depending on which button you hover over. If you motion across the game modes, compared to the other four buttons, however, it's actually slightly louder. Once you're past this wonderful user interface experience, there are more details that await you. Initially, a different song plays, and a one-step tutorial overlay appears to anyone who hasn't been trekking through one of the best UI experiences I've had in a while to look for the help button. The UI here matches what we've seen previously by giving off a fun, creative, and colorful appearance. A more specific example is the bottle on the left. When you request a hint, the bottle shakes with the slight sound of a and out comes the eyes of a chuzzle that soars to the heavens. Before flinging the chuzzles heavenbound, however, you must first match these cute furballs. If you match three of the same color, the eyes fly into a box. If you fill it up, the box closes up, transporting you to the next level. If you can't move, you are given three scrambles, which once you run out, it's game over. As simple as this concept sounds, it keeps its variety by implementing different forms of chuzzles, the tiniest of details that take a magnifying glass to discover, and the game mode. These mouthless puzzles come in seven forms. Normal, giant, locked, sunglasses, explosive, rainbow, and rainbow locked. Giant ones take up four squares. Locked ones lock them in a lock of locks. Sunglasses are more bonus points. Explosive ones are commentary channels on YouTube. Rainbow ones are rare. And a locked rainbow is like giving you free food, only to immediately take it back to set it on fire with a flamethrower. While being aware of these little guys, we can notice more details. Except these take Sherlockian skills to detect, so since I've seen the entirety of the BBC in reincarnation, I'm obviously a very trusted expert in this specific field of observation. The deductions I have concurred are the following. The hazy bubbles in the bottle. The slight animation of the fur. The eyes always moving around, especially if the cursor is near. If you grab a row and shake it around, that row of Chuzzle's eyes move around to give the impression that they're getting dizzy, while making a noise to cement that illusion. The cute sound effects they play when you match the Chuzzles. If a cursor is hovering over a Chuzzle for a while, it will get angry sneeze and force the cursor away. And finally, if you don't move long enough, one of the Chuzzles shakes to give you a little hint of where to move your next Chuzzle. 
Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, I got bored of Sherlock Heath pretending to be more intelligent than he actually was. It's probably a coping mechanism or something like that. Anyways, game modes are a thing! Before starting, we're given a casual versus expert prompt. Casual is an easy mode that lets you get used to the mechanics. Expert immediately throws different types of chuzzles at you from the get-go. Since I am an MSN Games veteran, let's just say I ain't no casual. By this point, you're fully aware with classic. Chuzzle. So that means it's time for some speed chuzzle. It's basically classic chuzzle except with two rules. If you don't match a row of chuzzles in time, they get locked. If a certain amount of chuzzles get locked where you cannot progress any further, you have to use a scramble. If this game gets too stressful, may I recommend a soothing and relaxing game of Zen Chuzzle. In this, there are no levels, as if time does not exist. Once the bottle is filled, it just pops out a chuzzle. And if you feel the need, maybe you can start your own chuzzle collection and have an army of adorable little furballs to show your friends and family. After whew, a relaxing game of Zen Chuzzle, it's time to rev up your brain with Mindbender. This is the hardest mode and definitely the most satisfying to complete. In this, you have to match the finished product on the left with your board. So it's nice to see a different kind of challenge using these things that I've already run out of ways to describe by this point. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't cry, no, I'm sorry, no, shh, it's okay. It's okay, alright? I'll be back. I love you. Thank you, Raptostop, for making one of my favorite childhood puzzle games in 2005. I know it's been 13 years, but hey, at least now there's one video on the internet dissecting this amazing puzzle game. If you ever make a sequel, hit me up. Hello? Hi, this is John Raptus from Raptosoft. Can you do me a favor? Oh, uh... Sure. Alright. Um, okay. I'm gonna end the call now, but I want you to look at your phone once I end it. Have a nice day, Ethan. What? I want to thank all my Patreon supporters. Thanks for sticking by. It really means a lot to me. Thank you for watching. If you're new, subscribe and press that bell for notifications because YouTube hates me. I got a lot of plans next year. I'm so excited for 2019. So many video ideas. Anyways, have a nice day. See you next week.